the Funky Podcast. Get off the loo. Get off your shoe. And listen up to me and Sean and Vaughn and Don and whatever. Whatever. The Funky Podcast. The Funky Podcast. The Funky Podcast The Funky Podcast The Funky Podcast Yeah! 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 Funky Podcast Welcome to the Funky Podcast. My name is Kieran. And my name is Earl. Is a show that I have seen before. My name is Sean. It's so funny on this. It's like the other way around. So it's oh, like wow. your your mic is um the one I'm speaking in, and it's oh. just it's confusing me. I feel like calling you it's... Kieran right now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Sean. No problem. No problem. Okay. Uh. Well, welcome back to the Funky Podcast. Um. Uh. Sean, how are you today? I'm doing pretty swell today. How about you? That's fantastic. I am doing okay myself. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, it's been it's been all right. Um. So yeah. Uh. Sean. Uh. I've been good. Um. Mm-hmm. I just have a question. A question. What are we going to talk about today? Today we are going to talk about motion pictures. AKA movies that we would like to see made. Not ones that are being made, not ones that are unmade. We have talked about that before. Ones we want to see made. Yes, that's right. Uh, we are going to pitch sequels, prequels, remakes, reboots, prequels, um, alternate things, whatever, uh, or just original things that come into our mind. So, um, would you like to start or shall I? Uh, I will let you, as they say, do the honors. Okay. Well, as before, I talked about a film called Little Charlie. Widow Charlie. And I just want to talk about it again. Little Charlie is a film that I have in my mind. And I wanted to start with Christian Bale as the main character, Little Charlie. And his mother is played by Glenn Close. And his teacher is played by Tessa Thompson. And it's a mix of Billy Madison and also that John Travolta film. What's that called again? Uh, You know the one I'm on about? Oh, I think I do. He plays a character called Moose. Moose. Yes. (sighs) I cannot remember the name. Neither can I, but I feel like I, I feel like I know the one you're talking yeah, about. No, yeah, no, I know. I have the picture in my mind, Damn. and I'm freezing on it. Uh, that's look, a shame. I'll have to look that up. Yeah, uh, while well, you're looking that up, anyway, it's kind of based on that kind of. It's uh, about it's little Charlie, uh, Christian Bale as he looks now, but with a cap, and I want the film to open with him. Uh, with new sketchers and jumping up and down with his coloured sketchers and kind of doing a vlog and the vlogs get two views uh, one from him and one like from him and you know it's uh, it's in that vein of um, you know uh, people out there but you know you may see him as this kind of weird kind of uh, man child but you see throughout the piece in this uh, city picture that he is a, just a, a heartfelt human who just wants to be loved amazing and Tessa Thompson I want him to have a teacher student relationship but not that uh, not that weird I mean you may think it might go down that route but 
it wouldn't. It's just kind of a buddy sort of thing. And it, it, isn't, it's, it isn't going full Riverdale. Or uh, Pretty Little Liars or anything like that. Yeah. It's, um, although that would be uh, a weird uh, kind of ship. Or, you know, some people might, might write fan fictions about it or whatever. Mm. But it's, um, it's just a kind of a heartfelt thing. And uh, also, it's not too depressing as well. It also has, uh, it ends off with uh, something where uh, they run down the road um, and he dances to like funky music and then the camera like uh, tilts up and the credits start and it's just him uh, kind of, you see him going off in the distance and the credits are still rolling and uh, yeah, that's it. Amazing. First and foremost, um, to correct uh, what we were talking about earlier, the movie with John Travolta you're thinking of is The Fanatic. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's Directed right. by uh, Fred Durst and yeah. uh, with a whopping 15% on Rotten Tomatoes, I find. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of movies don't even get 15. I think we should ran- we, I think we should call that an achievement. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, Little Charlie. I think, uh, yeah, I think, I think one thing I love about Little Charlie is, you know, we talk like a lot is said of like child actors and how it's like you know the child acting thing is kind of an unsafe profession. So I like how in this one it's like you know what, let's just stop having child actors. Let's it, for their own safety. I think uh, I think Little Charlie would be a very big step forward for uh, Hollywood. Hopefully for uh, children's rights all around the world as well. Mm, yeah, I had this idea as well. Uh, his mom to have a young boyfriend, and he's played by uh, someone like Jason Bateman right and i really want a scene where jason bateman's character is kind of making fun of little charlie and we're in jason base bateman's house and uh tessa thompson is there as well and uh glenn close and uh, a couple of other people it's like a kind of a get together sort of thing i don't know why they have a teacher there they just do for some reason uh i mean they're friendly probably um and basically uh little charlie gets kind of pissed and uh, he he walks over, and he's like, um, uh, he asks, uh, what movie in 1977 was a hit? And uh, Jason Bateman says, I don't know, Star Wars or something. And then like, uh, uh, Charlie goes, yes, yes, that's correct. Can you say? Uh, Star Wars 1977 was a hit, and Jason Bateman's like, all right, uh. Well, uh, Star Wars 1977 was a hit. So? And then Charlie goes, In 1977, Star Wars was a hit. And now, I'm gonna take the DVD that I found, and I'm gonna take a big, massive shit. And then he, like, pulls down his pants, and uh, he has a shit uh, on his floor. Mm. On his Star Wars carpet. And Jason Bateman gets angry. Do you think? Um, do you think one of the characters there would be a member of the fandom menace, and he would say, "What you're doing there? That's exactly what Disney's doing right now." <laughs> um, for sure. Yeah. Wow, love it. Uh, no, Nerd Roddick reacts to it. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good old Gary. All right. Uh, do you have? Um, do you have one? Why, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. So, you are probably aware there is uh, a film that is out there known as Zootopia, also starring Jason Bateman. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a great idea. We do Zootopia, but with humans, and we call it Topia. Fantastic. Yeah. Because, you know, I was watching Zootopia... Technically, Zootropolis, as it's called here in Europe, but yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. like that name half as much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, Zootopia uh, is a lot better. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, when I was watching Zootopia, I was thinking, you know, I, I like this. As, uh, as the kids say, I definitely, uh, I fuck with this. Uh, it's kind of bussin', and uh, it goes quite hard. However, my one hang-up was that everyone in it was an animal, and uh, that's not very realistic. And it took me way out of the experience, so I'm thinking... In Topia, it's just everyone's a human being. What do you think of this? I think it improves the movie a lot. Yeah, I was actually thinking to myself, imagine if they made Zootopia but live action. And it's like, 
mm. live action animals, but it's like people in uh, man in suit and creatures and stuff like that. What do you think of that? I think uh, that'd be very compelling. I think, you know, you can hire a lot of furries to work on that movie, yeah, you know, yeah, like they yeah. need they need some more employment, you know? Yeah, I, I think it'd be really interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I get like uh, uh, Kelsey Grammer as like the lion or something. Mm. Uh, there is a lion in that, isn't there? Uh, yeah, he's the mayor, if I yeah, recall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kelsey Grammer, yeah. Uh, I, I just think that'd be epic. Mm. Yeah, I just... Uh, I think with Zootopia, it would work. I think what would really take me out of the experience would be if they did uh, Kung Fu Panda. Uh, I would hate that because uh, those animals uh, mean something to me. And they look a lot better than a lot of people that I know in real life. And uh, yeah, no, that would take me out of the mm. experience. Could you imagine that? Yeah, like why would they like? Why they even have to call like what? What just Kung Fu Man? Yeah, ridiculous. Now yeah. Topia, Topia. Now that's that's the good shit. The the only the only thing that I would take for Kung Fu Panda only if it was uh, them like the actual actors who actually yeah. did it. Like, could you imagine uh, Dustin Hoffman and uh, Ian McShane actually <laughs> fighting? That would be epic. That would be quite epic. Yeah. Uh, but for uh, Zootopia, but Topia, uh, that sounds uh, very intriguing. Um, who would you um, who would you uh, cast in Topia? Would you get the same uh, people again? Well, as Judy Hopps, there is only one actor in this world who I think could really like just who I think really has the talent and potential to bring the character of Judy Hopps into the human world. And that is Chris Pratt. I think... Can you think of one solid reason as to why Chris Pratt should not play Judy Hopps in this film? Absolutely none. Absolutely none. Absolutely I think none. I think that is uh, a very, very uh, intriguing idea. Exactly. As the character of Nick Wilde. Uh, the classic character Nick Wilde, played by Jason Bateman in the movie, of course. However, for this one, I think we need to go in a slightly different direction direction i think not many people were expecting but i think it would work out for the better nick wilde should be played by chris pratt oh well i that was the last person i was gonna guess oh Can yeah i um name uh name another character from uh Zootopia. go ahead go I right think, ahead can you uh i don't know uh who else hasn't been cast uh, do you know any other characters? of the characters yeah oh well of course you got the iconic sloth as well probably uh the most comedic scene in the movie. Um, oh, comedic. Oh, I think he should be played by Pete Davidson. Hmm. A compelling thought. Yeah, I was going to say, like, since he's already, like, a love experience in comedy, that it should go to Chris Pratt. Oh, maybe they could uh, share. Yeah, yeah, it could be. They could uh, do some funky shit where they uh, get both their voices together and, like, layer them on top of each other, do some, like, sound mixing. Like, very, very experimental, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, or maybe uh, Chris Pratt does the movie and then uh, Pete Davidson does the show. Oh, wow. The Disney Plus original show. Yeah. 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 Got to have one of those nowadays. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think um, it would be very interesting if the film was distributed uh, or directed by, uh, you know, Jared Leto. Wowzers. Yeah. Um, yeah. We all know Mr. Jared Leto like has a lot of experience with acting and with music, but uh, going into directing, that would be uh, just one more, uh, as they say, an infinity stone on his gauntlet. Yeah. Nobody actually says that, of course, but, you know, I just said it. So technically, yeah, it is something that people say now mm -hmm. because I said it. Do you have any final thoughts on Topia? On Topia? I have one final casting decision. The police chief, played by Idris Elba in the movie. He's a bull, but he's a human now. And he'll be played by Chris Pratt. Oh, wow. That poster would be really interesting. Yeah, Pratt, yeah. Pratt, 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 Pratt. But you know, if it works, it works. And I think it works. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, the marketing uh, would be very uh, intriguing. It would also get uh, really big in the meme culture. Mm. Uh, but yeah. Uh, it's going to be really cool uh, speaking of Jared Leto uh, he did a little movie called Morbius it made more billion dollars and has 
uh, a more billion uh, hundreds and hundreds mm. of percentages on Rotten Tomatoes. They just couldn't fit it all into the Google thing, yeah. so they just had to cut it. So it was just too much. So it's um, yeah. Yeah, and there's like like there's a lot of misinformation that goes about like oh it's like it's this low on like Rotten Tomatoes. Like it went over a hundred, so it had to reset. And like you know that's that's why it comes out as like not a hundred mm. on. Uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, and I yeah. was like, "This whole oh my god, this this blatant misinformation." Yeah, just just like, read the comments on YouTube, and they tell exactly. you exactly all about it. And uh, what's really interesting about Morbius as well, they have all that uh, Spider-Man stuff in the trailers. Yeah. Now I only think they put that in there just so that they could uh, show uh, something to get people excited. But when they actually go see the movie, they get even more excited because it's yeah. such a city picture and such a motion picture on its own. It exactly. literally made Martin Scorsese's like, like a hard drive come out of his arse because he like a whole hard drive of uh, loads of like ideas and uh, so much inspiration from this uh, masterful uh, class art. You know. Yeah, I agree, and you know. A lot of people say, like, yeah, but, like, if it's so good, how come it failed on its second run in the cinemas? Guys, you got to realize, during its first run, it made every dollar in America and every, like, every currency all across the world. Like, the only reason it didn't do well on its second run was because they needed more time to print more money after that. Like, dude, dude, like, come on. So we know how good Morbius is. But my idea is, what if we had Morbius... A Milo story. Ah, oh, you just made my heart flutter right there. Now, you may be thinking, what about Jared? What about poor Jared? Well, Jared can be in the film. Exactly. But it's Milo. Uh, it's his story. Because uh, Matt Smith, a uh, very, very uh, handsome man, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he deserves to uh, dance more and yeah he just he deserves so much and i think that morbius a milo story could be better than rogue one or solo and we need that more you know yeah you know like we see we see all these like disney plus original shows and they're giving it to like all these obscure characters it's like the uh, Daredevil, uh, the, like the doing movies of like the Fantastic Four. It's like, yeah, okay, okay, fine. Like, you're gonna go for these like deep cuts, but you're not going to like go for like an iconic beloved character like Milo. Like, why? I I, I believe this will be like uh, Constantine uh, with oh. Keanu Reeves, sort of um, following him, and uh, maybe even like it could be three hours as well. Uh, like the Batman and mm. uh, be directed in that style but it's about Milo wouldn't that be great it would be so great that I would cry and shit myself right there in the cinema yeah uh, that's that's my idea I, I just want a Milo movie it's beautiful I also want a Milo movie make it happen Sony please please after El Mor- at least have Milo in El Morato El Muerto, yeah. El Muerto. Speaking of Sony, you may be aware of the fact that um, there is to be a The Last of Us show coming soon based on uh, the video game of the same name, starring uh, Pedro Pascal. Uh Uh, You know, pretty cool what they're doing there, you know, like, nice they're doing it. Yeah. But I'm thinking, like, okay, they're doing The Last of Us, and they've done Uncharted. When are we going to get the live-action Crash Bandicoot movie starring Jack Black oh. as Crash Bandicoot? Oh. And I'm not talking CGI. Like, I'm talking, again, fursuits. Like, again, like, a big goal with all these movies is, like, I really want to, like, you know, bring some equity to the furry community who I think, uh, you know, have been ostracized mm-hmm. from uh, the entertainment industry mm-hmm. for too long, despite their influence. Yeah, yeah. Um... I, I want to add something to that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's furry suits for a little bit, but I think uh, Sony are so experimental with their universes and stuff like that. So I think what would be great is if uh, the presentation of the picture uh, was in uh, black and white mm-hmm. uh, for uh, the first um, 17 minutes. And then 
it uh, switches and then it turns into 2D animation and then 3D and then stop motion and then back to the fursuits and it, it switches uh, each time the story gets more impactful exactly um, and uh, if it's happy it changes to 2D if it gets really happy it changes to 3D and then when it gets uh, very uh, sad it changes the first suits in black and white and then it like switches all over and then there's like um, maybe musical scene where like all the different sides of them are like singing and it's like uh, four different screens uh, at one time singing away and stuff like that and then they should do uh, the, the box set of uh, all the different versions and uh, you can watch uh, whatever version you want and uh, also uh, for uh, s- some uh, big um, screens and uh, big uh, companies, they rent out the whole cinema and just have that one movie play, but uh, it's all different versions of that same film. Do you like that idea? It's incredible. Yeah. Only like a forward thinker, forward think the forward thinkers such as us could come up with such a thing. Yeah. Um, it's so good as well that uh, they don't even need to uh, get uh, someone to translate. They just have um, the subtitles. And uh, for the hearing impaired, hmm. uh, they have someone in a furry suit uh, do the sign language. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's very good, yeah. And uh, when, th- when the person is in the way at the screen, like... Uh, moves them aside so you can see the uh, person in the furry suit just in case like they're in the way or something they like they they do it so subtly like moving across the screen <laughs> moving across the screen left while they're doing the sign language so uh, you can see it so yeah incredible yeah I think um, if I may suggest a title for this movie uh, the only title I can really think of but it feels very appropriate is the Bandicoot. Ooh, yeah, a uh, very um, very Batman style there. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I wouldn't get Matt Reeves to direct it, but I get no. Matt Reeves uh, to act in it. Uh, I would too. Matt, Matt Reeves with his hat, uh, standing in the background. Matt Reeves with his hat, Reeves yeah. right in the next Bat Reeves. Yeah. And um. Yeah, that's that Reeves. Yeah. And uh, as um, the person doing the sign language, uh, Jared Leto, with sunglasses. I agree. And uh, to direct this film, I uh, I can see. I mean, you know, ever since like I first played Crash Bandicoot, I thought to myself, if this were to be a movie, like I can only imagine Darren Aronofsky directing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, the next uh, film that I have in my head, uh, are you done? I think so. Okay. Uh yeah um is uh the next movie uh is uh there was a YouTube uh thing when that was uh coming into the uh fold and stuff uh there was a a young boy by the name of Fred uh played by uh Lucas uh Crookshank uh Crookshanks and um uh Fred uh had three films uh Fred uh Fred two Night of the Living Fred and Fred, Fred 3, Camp Fred. And I want Fred 4, Fred Comes to Mayfield. I I, I just, sorry, I just I, I had to like, a, a tear just rolled down my cheek, I'm sorry. Um, wow. Uh, uh, by Mayfield, I don't mean uh, the character uh, Mayfield from The Mandalorian. I mean... Uh, Fred comes to Mayfield in Cork, uh, with yeah. uh, the um, uh, the crime and uh, some uh, stuff going on, or not just crime, but uh, to see uh, their fancy uh, stores, uh, to see their uh, lovely chippers, their lovely, <laughs> and uh, their of course their uh, their pubs, mm-hmm. and uh, to spend some time, and. Uh, f- Fred uh, gains uh, confidence from uh, the the Irish people that are a bit, uh, let's say, a little bit silly and a bit crude. Uh, but uh, Fred also opens up the hearts of uh, those who are cruel or those who are uh, having that uh, sort of thing. And uh, 
yeah, it's um, it's pretty interesting. Uh, there's uh, a scene where he uh, visits a chipper, and uh, he uh, throws up outside, and uh, a bunch of uh, what you would call knackers uh, laugh at him, but uh, Fred uh, has uh, gained a lot of confidence, and uh, uh, throws uh, Mayfield slang back at them. Incredible. Uh, they make fun of his voice. But he makes uh, fun of their uh, rotten uh, tracksuits full of muck and uh, other, uh, amongst other things. Exactly. And, uh, of course, like despite Mayfield, the character from The Mandalorian, not making an appearance here, Bill Burr can, of course, still cameo. <laughs> of course. Mm. Uh, should he be in the pub or the chipper? He seems more like a pub guy than a yeah, chipper guy to me. Yeah. I think so, yeah. I think Fred and him uh, should have a... Should he be himself telling a joke uh, in, like, the pub? Like, uh, you know, doing his uh, comedian thing? Or I think should so. he just be having a pint? Probably both, I would he say. He can do both, yeah. Yeah. yeah and, I think uh, he, uh, he yeah. has a pint with Fred and he's uh, joking with them, but uh, also, you know, in a way, he gives him a lot of uh, wisdom that uh, helps him to go forward. Like... Uh, he could be. Uh, he could be to this movie what John Cena was to the original Fred trilogy. Yes. Oh, what if Bill Burr is like they like they recast him as his dad, and it's actually Bill Burr, or Whoa. like it's like no John Cena appears as well, and he's like, "Sorry, Fred, I'm, I'm not your dad," <laughs> and then uh, he like walks out, and then it just turns out that it's Bill Burr. Wow. Um, it would explain his energy. It would. It would explain a lot. Yeah. It, I think I think you're very much onto something. We should, uh, yeah, we should get onto the theorizer about yeah, this. Yeah, and uh, he he find Fred uh, finds out he's two uh, percent Irish. Whoa! And uh, he like uh, thinks this is the best thing ever, and he has a pint and he dances and uh, all that, and uh, he sings. Uh, oh no! At the end, uh, there's uh, a cameo from Jedward, and uh, they sing a song uh, uh, only Irish people know. And uh, Fred raps as well, and uh, yeah, the, the movie uh, credits roll. Um, I think that's very impact. I think it's very good. I think mm-hmm. uh, I love that scene a lot. Um, should Crack Boy Mental also make an appearance on the soundtrack? Oh yes, yes. Crack Boy Mental should be in the film. He should be. He should. Uh, he should be like. Uh, he should be uh, Fred's temporary flatmate while he's in Mayfield. I think. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, the Young Offenders, uh, both of them appear. Mm-hmm. Shared universe. Shared, <laughs> shared universe. <laughs> they, uh, they, they uh, make a cameo. Also, um, uh, the, the the guy with the screwdriver on the bus, he appears. Um, uh, by, played by Shane Casey, again, mm-hmm. reprising his role. They all for reprising their roles. And uh, Kat Dennings appears in the movie. Uh, just uh, passing by. Wowzers. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, that's uh. That sounds like a great film. I think. I think so. I think Paramount Plus uh, original uh, as sponsored by RTE would just yeah blow up. Collaborative yeah. effort, you know. Yeah. Awesome. I think uh, the world right now is missing a figure like Fred in their lives, and uh, if no one else is going to fill the mantle, I think you know he yeah. just needs to come back and yeah, show these with the snappers how it's done. Mm, yeah, it's like. Fred comes into our us to inspire us, hmm. while Fred uh, takes a bunch of Irish heritage and is inspired by that and inspires all his uh, American uh, people, and we all kind of unite as one society. So yeah, Fred, uh, Fred for Fred goes to Mayfield, or Fred for Mayfield, which hmm. which one? Or Fred goes to Mayfield, but the A has a four in it. I think it should be called Fred Do It For Mayfield. Yeah, that that's good. Uh it's uh the cover is uh him smiling and then there's like a couple of uh you know, uh people in the back, you know, in tracksuits and stuff. Hmm. Uh one guy with his top off with like I don't know, like a Hurley or something and you know. Sexy. Yeah, awesome. Uh so um uh do you have one more or any others? As a matter of fact I do. Mm-hmm. 
Now, you're probably aware of a film called... Uh, you're probably aware of a film known as... Schindler's List. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, I propose something... Something very, very shocking. But I think something very uh, good as well. Schindler's List 2... Hitler Strikes Back. Amazing. Who It'll, would you get as Hitler? As Hitler? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's it, when you think about these things, like, it's kind of awkward because it's like, it's a bit weird to, like, pick out someone to, like, play a character. Yeah. Well, I, I, a real I, person yeah, who is, like... I, I have I have one. Who do you have? You remember Polka Dot Man in The Suicide Squad? How could I forget him? That that like that actor. Yeah. I can see it a lot. Yeah. No, I can definitely see that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be perfect. I think that's your choice. That's that that's nice. the choice that the studio should make. I think so. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but what happens uh how does Hitler strike back? He's a bit dead now, isn't he? Well, is he though? Because I think it opens up, uh, it's 20 years later, you know, uh, Schindler's like, you know, Schindler's got his family and everything. And he's making his lists. He's making his lists. This time he's making shopping lists for his kids. And uh, he gets a phone call on the phone, as most phone calls uh, had. And he, hears his good old, and he hears his good old buddy, old pals from the army, and they call him and they say, somehow, Hitler has returned. And he's like drops in a moment of shock. And then what they have to do is since Hitler has come back and he's taking over Germany once more, they all have to like take matters into their own hands and drop right onto the battlefield and go fight him. Amazing. Incredible, I know. Yeah. And you might be saying, like, that seems a bit disrespectful to, like, do that for a real event. But, I mean, you know, it only said based on true events, you know? Like, it didn't say, like, this was a true event. Like, so, I mean, I, I don't know. I personally think you're being a bit pedantic. Mm, yeah, no, I agree. I think, um, I mean, it could have happened. Hmm. You know, it could have. Yeah. We just, we, we could, I don't know, we, we didn't have a pen or something. We couldn't just write it down. So we didn't document it or exactly, something. Exactly, you know, like Or maybe it, every single person on that battlefield died. Everyone on that battlefield died and the people that survived didn't want to document it because, you know, rights and they couldn't get the rights mm. of the people that died, so they just left it, uh, you know. Yeah, no, they um they couldn't win the copyright war for Hitler. Yeah. Yeah, Hitler is a property of Fox now and they couldn't get it off him. Exactly. Uh, but yeah. yeah, Schindler's List 2 Hitler Strikes Back mm -hmm. uh, Should it be directed by James Mangold? Because uh, You know hmm. He's yeah. a good candidate Yeah But an even better candidate, I think Is Jared Leto Oh wow, we're really creating a lot of work for Mr. Jared Yeah, right? like coming like hot off the press from Crash Bandicoot yeah. In his no, sign he's direct, language he's direct, role. Yeah, he's... Uh, Crash he's, Bandicoot for the sign language. Yeah. And his other directorial work. And, like, yeah. on this hot streak, he just, like, drops, like, the masterpiece of his career. Yeah, Schindler's and he, he's too. making cameos and Morbius and Milo's story. And, like, yeah, he's dropping in and out and stuff, you know. Uh, yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, any other final thoughts on Schindler's List too? Um, I think it speaks for itself, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, -huh. good. uh, uh, I have an idea. Uh, it's another uh sort of spin off, I suppose. Uh, it's called I I called it City Pictures uh Motion Pictures presents uh Jade West a Victoria Saga, uh, wow. and I really want it to be directed by uh, a City Picture man, um, either D Denis Villeneuve or. Uh, the guy who directed uh, The Nordman Robert Eggers And Martin Scorsese maybe If he's interested Could be all three of them mm -hmm. uh, A Paramount Plus movie obviously Of course um, And it uh, features uh, Jade West 
uh, on a quest, uh, and a, vi- a victorious quest, and um, yeah, it's just a real uh, character uh, dynamic. Uh, obviously, it includes um, Elizabeth uh, Giles. That's her name, right? Elizabeth Giles so. or so. Gillis or whatever. I, I think it's Elizabeth Giles. Uh, obviously, she will reprise the titular role, and um, will meet uh, people. Um, from uh, Martin Scorsese movies like uh, Robert De Niro who uh, gives her advice and stuff and it's such a a character sort of thing and uh, the trailer will include a dramatic version of uh, Take a Hint uh, by uh, Jane West and that's uh, Take a Hint, Take a Hint but even even more epic and stuff and uh, Mm. just completely uh, with it uh, when obviously, my, when my always hit on by the boys, I never like do do. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's also um, like obviously cameos uh, by uh, people like Victoria, uh, but I think we really need to get down into the Victoria saga. Mm. So this film sets up um, the uh, Robbie and uh, his uh, relationship with the puppet. And uh, how uh, that all works, and uh, how he has a mind of his own, and stuff like that. We get really uh, deep into uh, horror territory. Uh, but for uh, Jade West, it's uh, more of a. Um, it's just, you know, you see a different side to Jade. You see her mind. You see everything. You just you understand. You go in her. looking for Jade West, and you come out, and you got Jade East. That's the best way I can describe it. Yeah, you have it. Jade in your blood, baby, after this movie. Uh, I think of Three Hour Epic, but uh, Jade is in every scene. Um, and, uh, you know, all most of the cast that we could get make a cameo, but I think in the the post credit scene, obviously, is uh, setting up with Robbie and the Puppet, but hmm. um, I think at the very end, uh, Ariana Grande appears as Cat. And that's like the big kind of Luke Skywalker moment. So I was going to ask, this does take place canonically after Sam and Cat. I would say it kind of, it, you kind of get different timelines, I suppose, with her. Um, you kind of see it from like all different perspectives and uh, maybe some of it takes place around the same time as Sam and Cat, but uh, the third act is definitely uh, much later, so... Uh, Cat has definitely uh, moved on a little bit and stuff like that. Okay, so. and uh, obviously, like through Sam and Cat, we know these take place in the same universe. Uh, does it uh, take place before, during, or after the uh, current Aikali series? Mm, I think uh, it should intertwine with that. Oh, uh, so um, Tebow uh, mm-hmm. makes a cameo uh, uh, from the Aikali uh, series, and uh, you know she's like really depressed and. Uh, her and Robert De Niro uh, go into the smoothie uh, place and uh, <laughs> they have a smoothie and uh, it just makes them feel better. And uh, Christopher yeah. Walken is like uh, sitting at the top and he's like, hey, I f- feel like uh, I should be in a bar, but uh, this place is uh, smooth. And then, like, uh, t was like, yeah, yeah, man, <laughs> all this. And, um, yeah, it, it also, like, um, you know, with the the post credit scene as well, it kind of, it's kind of revealing stuff like WandaVision uh, that we have to set up, uh, why there is a laugh track and why mm. there is a puppet and everything like that. It just, it's uh, everything. It's just uh, getting into the territory of all sitcoms, like, breaking... Uh, not even just breaking the fourth wall, just breaking every single wall you can find, yeah. you know? Just completely blowing it out of proportion. Incredible. So yeah, that's my pitch for uh, the Jade West film. I think my personal theory for uh, the backstory of Robbie's puppet is he is one of Spencer's inventions. Oh my god, yes. He was maybe one of Spencer's first inventions and he got disregarded and thrown away think uh, lots so in Toy Story yeah but uh he was found by Robbie and uh given a home but uh the trauma from that event uh it, it it's still like 
it, it has twisted his mind in ways that not even Robbie could undo. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, and um, for uh, the Victoria Saga, um, the whole, um, there's like a whole thing, because uh, Jade and uh, Robert De Niro and uh, Christopher Walken, they, um, they find uh, a message. Uh, oh. And the at the very this is the end of the movie before the post credit scene that sets up uh that uh, titular character, um but they realize they all have to team up to fight Neville, <gasps> uh, who is uh, a villain in the yeah, Carly, my goodness, uh, a recurring villain and uh, Nora as well the, from I Psycho, ah, oh. and um the dynamic duo, yeah. Uh, Gibby is mentioned actually mm. uh, and uh, he actually has his own uh, radio show and uh, he actually got banned for that because uh, he took off his top and uh, s- stood on the desk as he does I mean you know why are you even gonna like hire Gibby if you don't want some of that shirtless Gibby action yeah. you know and uh, yeah no it's um, that's I, I fully blame whoever hired him like you should have known what you were yeah. getting into like yeah. you can't send to the yeah. Gibbs but uh, th- this movie, you may think it's like full of cameos, but it's really not. You really understand Jade. You get into the mind and you're there with her, you know. Uh, some people may have like a reaction where they feel like they are Jade, uh, but that's okay. That's all right. I feel like that every day. Yeah, I, I get that. And uh, as I was like writing it as well, uh, writing the idea, I just almost like it took me away almost into this land. Uh, so yeah, um, that's basically my final thoughts on uh, the Jade West film incredible so I have another idea you may be aware of uh, another film coming out soon uh, Avatar Way of the Water but what I think we should do instead of Avatar 2 or well you know it can accompany Avatar 2 of course you know they can coexist James Cameron's Avatar the musical oh I know. Just just let that sink in for one moment. You know, he's never done it, but he's never done a musical as far as I know in his career. And you know, I think James Cameron uh, could. I mean, he's he's so diverse. You know, he could do it. Like I think a lot of the like material for musicals, like it just it writes itself. Yeah. Like I mean, I already have like a pitch for my like one song from it, "Feeling Blue." Oh wow! I am the avatar. I feel so blue. I feel blue. Yeah. I see upon your face that you are too. Ooh. Yeah. Awesome. I am on the planet of Pandora. La 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 la. Ow! I just stub my toe. It feels kind of sore. Ah, la 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 la. We are in Pandora. La 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 la. Pandora. 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 We should get like you know the guys from Kill the Skull. You know the la la. We could la la la. We could get them to do. Some songs for that as well. Mm. And of course, you know, like with it being a musical, we need to like get some actual singers in the cast. So mm-hmm. I think, uh, as Jake Scully, um, we should cast The Weeknd. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, the way Zoe Zaldana is um, of color. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember her name in the movie. Uh, Blue Girl. Blue Gamora. Um, Megan the Stallion. Incredible. I think they would make an amazing duet. Um, yeah. You know, this is coming right off the heels of She-Hulk, of course. Oh, yeah. Um, I think there should be a scene where Megan's character teaches the weekend's character how to twerk, such as uh, exactly like they did in She-Hulk. Yeah. Um, oh, who could be, like, uh, Scorny Weave? I think Meryl Streep should play that character just because she sang in Mamma Mia. That's and, good enough. Yeah. She sang once. Yeah. 
I mean, she's probably sung before maybe like a wedding or you know in church, mm. but you know in the shower. In the shower, yeah. Um, but uh, this time it's uh, uh, her as uh, the uh, not Ripley. <laughs> And, uh, the, uh, oh, who could play Stephen Lang? I feel like Stephen Lang has some notes in him. You know oh, what I, I think mean? he does. I feel like he could sing. And if not notes, I think he has buzz. Yeah. Yeah, Stephen Lang uh, spit bars. Hmm. Um, oh, uh, Michelle Rodriguez. Um, I feel like she should be played by... Is it Jenna Ortega? I believe so. Maybe. I don't know. Wednesday? No, I was thinking of uh, the uh, your one who was in Cork not so long ago. Oh, I I, I think that was Gina Ortega, yeah? I think? Yeah. Yeah, her. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe if it wasn't... Maybe if it wasn't... Uh, I, I feel like she can sing anyway. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, her is uh, Michelle Rodriguez's character. Yeah. Incredible. Um, yeah, no, I, I think this is a really, really good idea. Oh, and uh, since uh, Kay Winslet is going to be in the new one, mm-hmm. uh, she should uh, sing her char- character as well. I agree. Yeah. So, yeah, Avatar the Musical. Um, get on it, Jimmy Cameron. Yeah, get on it, Jimmy. I know you're, like, doing a couple of sequels, but, you know... Uh, you could throw in like you know uh, you're going like you're going like so hard turning this into a big franchise. You can at least slip in just a wee single musical in there, yeah, don't you think? Yeah, and uh, I think uh, Sam Worthington as well. Mm. Uh, uh, you know he should uh, not play Jake Sully, but he should play uh, somebody else um, with uh, Stephen Lang's crew and uh, him mm. and maybe Usher and maybe uh, Afghan Dan. And uh, possibly uh, Jimmy Carr, and wow. uh, they're in the background, uh, spitting some bars, kind of like um, bit like Queen if they rapped, mm. or uh, just a rap group, you know. Wow. A bit like a choir, yeah. They uh, could call themselves since it's Avatar the uh, the Blue Tang Clan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Any final thoughts on Avatar the musical? Uh, the Blue Man Group will also make a, make a, an appearance both on the soundtrack and in the background of a scene. Yeah. As a fun little Easter egg. Fun, 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 fun. Yes. Okay, you want to hear an idea from me as well? No, actually, I'm sick of your ideas. Now go on. Okay. Uh, now they are making a Mario movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, it will star Mario. Yeah. And Luigi. And Luigi and uh, all the others. Um, but And Link, yeah. my favorite Mario character. Yeah. And you know, th- there's uh, Link. Yeah, Link and, uh, you know, Samus and Mars. They're, they're not in it. Well. We don't know yet. Th- we, we don't know. You don't know for sure. Yeah, like, yeah. you don't know, like, what they're setting up in that after Yeah, may, may, maybe they, they will. Uh, hopefully. Hmm. Uh, fingers crossed for you. Um no, there's a. I have an idea because uh, Netflix is so on much the grind, and yeah. I was wondering if they do a two D animated Mario movie, or maybe like they can do a three D one, but it's uh, not as dear as uh, you know something like Illumination, hmm. or uh, you know uh, Universal. But uh, I really want uh, Danny Jacobs uh, to be uh, Luigi. Um, Danny Jacobs uh, is uh, King Julian. That's not Sasha Baron Cohen. He did the voice of him in the TV show uh, Penguins of Madagascar and also played him in the Penguins of Madagascar movie and in the games I would uh, prefer if they got the original voice of Mario uh, Tara Strong as Peach uh, Tara Strong is a voice actress um, she voiced um, everyone <laughs> yeah I'm gonna like I'm gonna go on a limb and say like if you've seen like any animated fil- have you seen any animated TV series or g- video game or video game uh, she was the girl in it yeah uh, she was also she made an appearance on one of the Arrowverse uh, TV shows uh, doing a vocal cameo of Harley Quinn hmm. she was also in Loki as well as yeah a- as uh, Miss Minutes mm-hmm um, it was like uh, standing uh, Harley Quinn from behind, and she did the voice of her. Uh, it yeah. was like a vocal cameo. Uh, 
Also, uh, who's in every single cartoon and every single uh, thing uh, is uh, Fred Tata Shore. Literally any uh, roar or, uh, you know, really loud growling is probably him. Uh, or Frank Welker, who's also mm. uh, going to be voicing the Goombas. But Fred Tata Shore should uh, voice Bowser uh, and or uh, Donkey Kong, in my mm. opinion. Uh, Carrie Walgren, who's also in uh, pretty much a lot. Uh, as King Boo, she voices uh, Charmcaster in Ben 10. She was a uh, tigress in the Kung Fu Panda Legends of Awesomeness. Uh, she's a secondary tigress, but uh, she did an okay job for an animated show. She's not Jolie, but, you know, who is? Um, and uh, finally, uh, this is my favourite one, and I think uh, I should get, like, a medal or something for this one, is uh, the character Toad should be played by Conrad Vernon, he is the same voice actor who voiced Pinocchio in the Shrek films. And I think it's pitch perfect for that character. And that's that my idea. That is kind of pitch perfect, yeah. Actually. Yeah, uh, that's my idea. I like it a lot. Um, what should the premise of this series be? Um, Do you think it should be... Uh... It's co- uh, just in the Netflix description, it says we're faithful. We're fateful. That's it. Two words. That sounds very ominous, almost like I'm being uh, led into a cult meeting of some sort. Is mm-hmm. this some kind of secret uh, cult induction meeting you're creating? Maybe. Wow. But well, uh, know, it, I always respect someone who yeah. can get a crowd going, so yeah, but, I like um, it. But this, uh, what's really interesting uh, about this film, I want it to be the quickest recording ever for an animated feature. Okay. I want the whole cast to sit around in a circle in the room uh, with mics and they all read it together and they all acted it out together and it takes a couple of hours and then every single voice is recorded. And if anyone got a line wrong and made any mistake, we keep it in. Authent- yeah. Authenticity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, like, I'm sick of, like, all these, like, films where, like, they correct their mistakes in, like, post-production. I mean, like, like, if they mess up, they can, like, fumble it and we can, like, edit yeah, that out. I, yeah, like, but I think we we should stop doing that. Like, anytime, like, you know, a shot doesn't look right, they're like, uh, take it in. I'm like, no, own up to your mistakes. That's the way it is now. Yeah, yeah. I'm sick of all these people, like, trying to make their films good. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Nothing in life is good. It just is. Shame on you. We, we want it raw, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's my pitch. I There's, love it. I, I, don't, I don't really have any ideas for the plot. I just... Uh, I, I just... I want it to be faithful uh, to uh, the original source. Uh, but, you know, not make Peach too much of a damsel. Hmm. But also, like, give references to that. Give, but make uh, it... Uh, give, give Peach a gun. Uh, yeah, she gets a gun... But uh, she's not stepping on the balls of Mario like uh, you uh, pitched the last time. No, we'll save that for the movie. Yeah. Uh, this one, um, she uh, kicks him uh, twice. And then she punches him. And then uh, she uh, takes his hat. And she's like, it's my adventure now. And then we don't see Mario for the entire movie. I wish I had a girl like that in my life. But uh, we we probably won't get that. Don't worry, don't mm. worry. Uh, that was it's like a nightmare for Nintendo people, uh, or uh, Nerdrotic or one of those lads. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, it's the whole f- fandom menace there yeah. on it. Like breaking you know. Super Mario goes woke. Yeah. Oh God, no. Uh, that it's that would only happen if it was directed by Kevin Smith. Hmm. But uh, uh, I'll make sure that it's directed by uh, someone competent. So. Hmm. Speaking of Kevin Smith, um, he's announced he's gonna do us. He plans to do a sequel to his movie Tusk. Oh yeah. And frankly, like I think, I think that's weirder than anything we've mentioned here today. So mm-hmm. yeah, I just want to give a special mention to that. Oh yeah, yeah. Johnny Depp was in Tusk. He was, yeah. I wonder what he's doing nowadays. Yeah. Probably like, probably just like enjoying his home life in peace. No, not really like staying out of the public eye, you know. Yeah. I imagine that's what he's been doing for the mm. past year. Maybe. So my final pitch today. 
Oh, your final one. My final pitch. We've had Trolls the movie. We've had the Lego movie. We've had many Barbie movies, and we're going to get another Barbie movie next year. And it will be the movie of the year, I think. I present to you the concept Rubik's Cube the movie. Oh my god, yes. Now, and it's, it's a puzzling uh, I, I, it's ideology. A, it's a psychological thriller keeping like perfectly in tone with the original Rubik's Cube toy. It'll 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 it it, it 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 poses many questions. Yeah. Uh might not always give you like the most immediate answers, but it's you just gotta like you gotta you gotta like learn to like let that go and just go with the mystery, you know? Mm. I thought you were gonna like pitch like it was gonna be like a game competition and it was gonna be like Spike Kids game over. And oh. it was like people like with Rubik's cubes and there was like one guy who was like you know, doing like a really fast and then he enters competitions and he meets like a lot of Chinese kids and they're like faster than him and he like he enters uh the competition but it's all children and he loses. But uh yeah, no, that your no, one sounds um, much better. That can be a that can be a different movie. That sounds like a great movie in its own right, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that can be a Paramount Plus uh played by um uh Jerry Trainer. <laughs> but yeah, my uh my pitch is that uh, we follow the Rubik's Cube himself and it gives a very deep look on uh, a lot of topics like you know we know he can uh, switch around his colors and everything but uh you know it, we get to see like how the world treats him differently like when he switches like which of his colors is like showing on his face you know it says a lot about uh about the racial divide in the world and uh mm. asks a lot of questions about society uh but that's not all like you know like he still hasn't like fully solved himself and uh, i think that's shown very literally like any scene where like he's feeling conflicted all the colors will be mixed up very rapidly but yeah sometimes when he can put himself together into like one color uh people will treat him differently because of that and i think again it's a very powerful metaphor for how sometimes we uh fake uh outer selves in order to uh gain things in our life yeah yeah yeah, that sounds like a fantastic idea. Yeah. I like it. And, you know, there's, like... He, he goes to his, like, job, and there's, like, another Rubik's Cube there, and it's one of those, like, light-up electronic Rubik's Cubes, oh. and it's, like, he feels inadequate in comparison, which yeah. I think... We, we can all feel inadequate in, like, a workplace, a school mm -hmm. environment, or just any social environment where you can all relate to that, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. I, I think th this I is a story for the people. The, yeah. Uh, and the, I, the everyman? I have an idea. The average Joe? I have an idea for that as well. Go ahead. There is no voices heard in the movie. Oh. And it's all score. It is all score and visuals. And the score is the voice. Yeah. Well, so it's like it's like in like the Peanuts. Anytime the, the adult stock is just like a bunch of like music. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's... um. That's incredible, Sean. Very incredible. Yeah, I love it. So since that's your final pitch, I have two more. Two more? Yeah. Okay. I have one called... Oh, wait, no, I have three. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, I'll go through this one quick. It's called Spider-Man and Shrek Go to Space. That sounds like the premise to one of those YouTube kids animations. But... No, it's just missing Elsa. Oh yeah, no this this one, um, uh, Peter Parker, Spider Man. I, I'm thinking it's Andrew Garfield, Spider Man. Yeah, I think so. I and think he's, he's like a... he's walking around town, and next thing, and three D animated Shrek just poof, shows up, and like Spider Man's like oh, and he's like who are you? Well, oh, my, I am Shrek. What am I? You know, all this, and it's like weird, and like Spider Man's like, it's okay, it's okay, and like they're like talking away and stuff like that, and then what happens is Andrew Garfield, Spider Man, uh and Shrek are walking, uh down some alleyway at night. They're like chatting away, and next thing, Morbius. And 
Adrian Toomes and Venom and Milo they all show up to beat up Shrek and the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man but they overpower them just about no they none of them die it's okay it's all good but uh Shrek and Andrew Garfield get away uh Shrek uh takes Adrian Toomes's uh body armor uh so he can fly and uh Andrew Garfield uh Spider-Man like webs on and they fly into space whoa and they have adventures in there where no one can hear anybody scream and it's all about making it home uh for uh Fiona's birthday party oh wow so Shrek sticks by his woman that's uh you can respect that a lot yeah and uh they're in space and they have to uh figure out stuff oh and uh the minions are probably in space as well oh yeah you know uh, uh cameo Universal. cameo in there uh, this 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 is like this is great with collaboration. This is like what happens when Universal and Sony come together. Yeah, we get Shrek and Spider Man. Like you know, yeah, it's amazing. I also have another question. Uh, Venom, Adrian Toomes, Morbius, and Milo. Yeah. Could uh, they possibly reconcile with Shrek and Spider Man, and uh, that becomes the new Sinister Six? Oh, I wish, but um, I, I think uh, Shrek and Spider Man will form their own crew. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. They'll form uh, the new Avengers. Yeah. Yeah, no, for the uh, remaining Sinister Six, uh, they just get two minions. No, for the, uh, for the remaining uh, Sinister Six, it's, um... You know, the lads from uh, Despicable Me, the first one. Uh-huh. Uh, the, the, ma- the main villain. Vector. Vector. Vector! Him... And grew. Wow, I I like that a lot. Yeah. You know, I mean, if like if Sony can like take Craven the Hunter and like they can make him a dude that loves animals, keep keep in mind like they've said like Craven's a character that loves animals in the movie. His mm. name is his name is literally the Hunter. Yeah. If they can change that, they can they can they can make some like slight tweaks to the Sinister Six and put Gru in there. Yeah, and um, Jesus Christ, mm. um. Yeah, so yeah, I, I yeah, um, Spider Man and Shrek go to space, uh, iconic movie, and uh, I think, um, you would think that uh, I Andrew Garfield uh, Spider Man will go uh, with Shrek um into his world, um, but he like hangs out there for a bit and he's like, no, I got to go home. So we uh they get Merlin uh to bring him home. Is Merlin like the uh, Doctor Strange of this movie? Yeah, he's like actually a Doctor Strange variant. So. Oh, no. And uh, that's the plot twist. Benedict Cumberbatch also appears uh, at the end. Uh, so yeah, 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 iconic stuff. And it sets up uh, so many so many films. Uh, sets mm. up Shrek 5 and Avengers Secret Wars. So, yeah. And Sinister Six. Yes, of course. And uh, El Morato appears too. Uh, he, he's he's, he, uh, he's playing the guitar. He's setting up his own team. Yeah. It's uh, it's called the El Muerto team. Yeah, and uh, Danny just... Trejo and Antonio Banderas and uh, yeah. Sam Hayek. They uh, they all play El Muerto. They all play El Muerto variants. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next one is called My Telephone. My Telephone. Yeah, and it stars Lady Gaga, and um, and Lady Gaga goes to Blackpool in the UK and keeps getting uh, rang at important moments uh, when she's in meetings when she's on the loo. And like you know, uh, where everything is getting uh, frustrating, and uh, she uh, is trying to uh, write her uh, next song, "Telephone Part 2. and uh, she meets a lad called Afghan Dan uh, from uh, Blackpool in the UK, and uh, they end up uh, collaborating on uh, the next uh, telephone uh, song. Who's uh, Afghan Dan? Also has a song called "Ring Ring." Mm. So uh, yeah, it's. Uh, that's my pitch. Incredible. So, we, you know, we all know like the uh, there's some beefs. There's uh, you know some uh, some some beefs that uh, Afghan Dan has gotten himself into. Um, within this movie, will Callum's corner play a role somehow? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, he'll um, he'll appear uh, reacting uh, to it at first. Um, at like the second act, he appears reacting to it. Um, and then uh, the third act, uh, he learns to reconcile, 
uh, with uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Danny Martin and uh, Lady Gaga, and they uh, collaborate on stage, and it's like a big uh, kind of stand up and cheer moment. There's like a silhouette of Callum, and they're like, "Who's that?" And then like Callum walks out. Uh, he's wearing his uh, Nike Air Jordans, and uh, his real Jordans. His as he real wants Jordans. To know. His real Jordans. And uh, his massive uh, tic tac head, uh, mm. and uh, his massive uh, body, his massive hand holding a big microphone, uh, ready to spit some bars. Uh, of course, with Tom Stockdale, who's uh, kind of coming in behind him. Always by his side. Yeah. Uh, and the crowd is uh, Megan Thee Stallion, uh, Jared Leto, uh, Sabrina Carpenter, um, the Olsen twins. Um, uh, Alan Cumming oh. uh, he appears and uh, Jake Paul uh, appears in a, a rant video uh, against it and uh, Little T of course has to make an appearance oh yeah Does Little T and uh, uh, Dil- Dilby and uh, the yeah the whole Blackpool scene yeah uh, Sophie Aspen and uh, yeah. all them yeah yeah, all, all the Blackpool uh, grime artists, uh, past and present, mm. uh, all over. And, uh, yeah, they kind of, you know, it doesn't take away from uh, Miss Gaga's uh, excellent presence. Yeah, so. it's still, we don't we, wa- we don't want you to forget, this is a Gaga story, first and foremost. Yeah, uh, but it also sets up um, the uh, Lady Gaga uh, origin movie. Uh, just not her origin, but like, you know, uh, you know something in, uh, along the lines of the Elvis movie. Uh, but uh, at this uh, in this one, she's actually played by Anya Taylor Joy. Uh, you know, so it will it works. Mm. And uh, yeah, and the, the the last final one is actually uh, based on an idea I had when I was watching a movie called Tenet. Uh, I was uh, very confused, uh, very bored uh, watching uh, Mr. Nolan's film, and I really wanted a movie called Tent with. Uh, Robert Pattinson and John David Washington uh, where they uh, stay out in a tent and they camp and uh, things go horribly wrong their ke- tent gets stolen and you know they have to get to the back of a truck and you know they just get into all shenanigans in uh, County Carlow so yeah mm. uh, in the fields of County Carlow and they have to like talk to like farmers and they have a so- uh, song musical I miss me tent I miss me tent and all that you know some guy with mm. a guitar uh, they get into shenanigans uh, they get chased by a bear and you know it's just uh, an iconic sort of uh, uh, out and about sort of uh, lads uh, film so uh, yeah incredible yeah any uh, any thoughts on uh, that particular pre- uh, premise I think yeah I think um, you know Tenet in general Kind of seems like it was a low point in Nolan's career. Oh, I yeah. Think. Yeah, no, it was. You know, I think uh, hopefully like he can bounce back with Oppenheimer, but, you know, even if he can't, you know, I think he could really bounce back with this tent. Like, it's a universal concept, I think. Everyone, like, knows what a tent is. Uh, like, you just, you see, like, a movie called Tent, you're like, oh, that's a tent, and it's like, boom, instant, instant connection. Yeah, it connects with people like on a deeper level. Yeah, no, nobody knows what a, a tenet is. Like, mm. I see like tenet, and I'm like, oh, David Tenet, D- David. Ten- <laughs> is this like a Doctor Who? Kind what of is this exactly? Yeah. I see tenet, and I'm like, oh yeah, I know those. Yeah, and uh, there should be um, a scene where uh, Robert Pattinson and John David Washington are like walking uh, in the woods, and uh, they see they got out onto uh, the street. And uh, it's all dark. There's a couple of people around, but uh, they see uh, free candy written on the side of a van. And uh, John uh, David Washington gets overwhelmed by this and like turns into uh, a little boy uh, wanting free candy. It's, and, it's uh, really his little Charlie moment, you know? Yeah, and uh, like uh, runs over. Uh, Robert Pattinson's trying to stop him because he... Uh, no, it can't, can't possibly because Pat, Pattinson's always like so dark and cynical. Oh my god, he, he doesn't appreciate free candy. Yeah, and uh, yeah, they uh, John David gets kidnapped. It's sort of like a dumb and dumber sort of situation, mm. uh, but um, it's like 
uh, dark and brooding and uh, kind of happy. I don't know. Happy at moments and kind of serious when it has to be, but mostly happy. A lot like life in a way. Yeah, yeah. The uh, only uh, the only thing I'd add to the movie is I think there's a scene where John David Washington's character is taking a bathtub with him on the journey, and Rob Pattinson says, "Bro, what 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 what, what is that?" And he says, "Oh, it's my John David Washington tub." Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that, also, that's that's my pitch. I, I expect yeah. at least fifty percent screenplay credit for that. Yeah, of course, and uh, the. There's also a tent too that's in the works uh, with uh, Denzel Washington and uh, uh, Ro- so, Robert Pattinson aged up. Oh uh, well. well, this is uh, so. This is like their version of Top Gun Maverick. Yeah, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. And uh, one final thing as well. Um, uh, a shout out to the dead don't die. Uh, we should do, um, yeah, uh, we were right. They're still alive. Uh, that should be the title. And uh, Mr. Donald Glover. No, uh, it's actually a prequel. And Danny Glover is played by Donald Glover. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. This is kind of a funny little uh, anecdote, I guess. Like this is, but like, I remember like seeing like an article for like the dead don't die. And um, it said, like, it was, like, announced in the cast, and it said, like, Childish Gambino was in the movie, and I'm like, oh, they, they saw Danny Glover, and they thought it was Donald Glover, didn't they? I forget I forget which, like, website it was, but I just, like, I find that funny, like, an actual, like, like professional article, like, made that mistake. Yeah, uh, that, that was, like, almost, like, the same thing with uh, Idris Elba and uh, Will Smith. Uh, they accidentally said, uh, DC, I think it was Warner Brothers, accidentally put up on their Twitter uh, happy birthday to Idris Elba, who is 50-something today. Uh, uh, he was wonderful in the Suicide Squad, where he played dead, dead shot. Ridiculous. Anyway. It's absurd. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's uh, pretty much uh, every uh, pitch that I have. Anyway, what about you? Uh, I think that's I think that's a very good uh, series of pitches. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, hope uh, everyone is doing well. Uh, Thank you for listening to the Funky Podcast. And uh, yeah, everyone, uh, have a good uh, day. Toodles. Yeah. How did you find that? I found that quite good. Felt like there was a lot of back and forth going on there. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. Uh, There we go. Uh, Yeah.